And here we go! <laughs> Kingmaker! If you want the pre-roll, if you want all the, the, the pre-roll conversation, you gotta catch us live. Yes. Now, um, everybody here is pretty much good to go? Yep. Yeah, I'm ready. Alright, so I'm just real quick gonna mute you guys. I'm gonna start my stream, and then we can get going. Sure. I'll be quiet. <laughs> next couple of sessions but um we have plenty to get us going and i am looking forward to seeing how this all manages to go um i'll get back to my players who are currently waiting in the discord and then we can get to it hey just give me one second go <laughs> yeah i saw that it's all right oh. <laughs> we'll cut that out in post yes yeah, it's fine i'm not sure <laughs> about it Okay, and that should be good. All right, everybody. So, um, thank you for the follow. A little I bit of an opener for everyone here. So, you all, we've discussed this previously, but you were all um, invited we are here using... by Lady Jamondi of the Aldori Sword. We are Lords. using Roll Twenty tonight. Um, you have all gathered somewhat of a reputation, um, from your various walks of life for different reasons, and we're set here uh or invited otherwise to this banquet um basically the general gist is that they need someone to clear out a piece of contested land that is to the west and stands in between them and a rival nation um the idea uh the general gist of the letter is that um upon fulfilling some criterias you will be possibly granted a uh, parcel of land and some aid as well as a title and for your own various reasons you've answered that call now make it not black. Boom. Well, um, when the doors open, this spacious hall has been prepared for a great feast. Service, servants hustle and bustle about while several armed soldiers, Lady Jumandi's house guards, watch over the hall from their positions against the east and west walls. To the north, a fire crackles away in a large fireplace. An iron lever secured by a lock adorns the fireplace's eastern face. Two massive crystal chandeliers hang from the ceiling 20 feet above. The walls are decorated with painted murals of idyllic woodland scenes, nymphs frolicking among waterfalls, satyrs dancing with fawns in wooded glades, and various winged fairy creatures flitting through the trees. Nine long tables arranged around the room, in the, the central portion of the room, each holding plates, utensils, mugs, and goblets, and full ready-to-be-poured pitchers of ale, wine, mead, and water. 
The smell of roasted meat and other delicious scents fill the room, yet no food has been served. Which are basically beckoned to take a seat, um, enjoy a drink, introduce yourselves to your fellow adventurers, and mingle for a little bit. The thing we talked about in session zero, uh, have I done that yet, or should I? Like, is that a thing that I should plan to do? Uh, no, you've you've done that already. All right, I've um, already had. That, okay. That that is why you are here. Got, gotcha. I wasn't sure if that was perfect. So I will. Uh, uh, you see, uh, should I describe my character for the rest of everyone's benefit, or? Yes, everybody. And we'll start with you then. Sure. Uh, not to not to steal the spotlight. Um, no, absolutely. Got to start <clears throat> somewhere. So uh, Dura is a, a a rather short orc, all things considered. He stands about maybe five foot six. Uh, he's got a very strongly built frame, wearing furs uh, in a barbarian style sense. Uh, a lot of tribal totem stuff going on. His uh, skin is marked with, like, tribal tattoos and, uh, in many places, even, like, the evidence of uh, ritual scarring. Um, he, like, I, as I said, he's rather short, but he is very, like, muscularly built. Uh, his general demeanor as he interacts through here is he seems a man uh, defeated. Almost as if he's uh, like as if he's carrying some sort of, of burden or weight that is uh, causing him to be upset. Um, so he enters the doors and he looks around and almost sighs at the society, uh, sighs at like how you know everybody's having this formal dinner and he looks very much out of place. Uh, but he will go up and I think. Uh, yeah, looking at the people here and just judging from what I sort of know about them, I assume that this lady looks rather tribally. She also yes. wears furs and whatnot? She does also wear furs and whatnot, and in fact has a massive sword on her back. So I think and she seems to be chugging mead very uh, eagerly. I think that is where Dura will find himself most comfortable. And so he goes, uh, uh, he will walk his way over, uh, probably, you said there's no food served, but there is drink? There is drink, there is no food. I think he grabs, uh, a tankard off of somebody else's table and then sits down here, uh, 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 uh Jason, and just Hold quietly on. will drink. These are the same image, I believe. He'll just sort of, uh, that the, with his stolen mug of ale, he'll just raise it and drink without words. tones has her kind of fuzzy cloak uh, around her uh, and seeing all of these uh, kind of important looking folks around her uh, immediately kind of ducks into a corner because <laughs> that's where she feels most uh, comfortable 
Uh, Elin is kind of average height, um, a little tan, just more of just living uh, mostly outdoors. Um, uh, kind of dark, darkish red hair, um, green eyes, and again, just has like earthy tones. Has her uh, uh, staff that kind of has a spearish head on it, and uh, kind of how she is uh, carrying around with her, and uh, is currently keeping to herself because she seemed very uncomfortable being here. Fair enough. Um, and then let us go to Mason. Hey, uh, Mason, uh, when you're looking at him, a uh, young man, probably in his very early 20s, around, you know, in the, you know, range of six foot, uh, well built from years of work in his youth working on a farm, and then eventually finding his way uh, trying to earn his way with uh, swinging a sword. He's dressed tonight in the finest things he owns, which he took his chain mail and really, really uh, shined it up, polished it up with sand. So that way it would look shining. And a cloak that possibly was a curtain at some point but he was able to make it look as nice as possible. Uh, he is a man at arms uh, that was invited uh, to the party because he is he's known as he's trying to uh, make a name for himself as a warrior. So there was there's fights to be had. So why not give him a chance? So he is pretty much a person who's up for anything any challenge because he's trying to prove himself and then when deciding where to sit he's looking between the two tables uh this one and this one uh dm can you tell me who's uh like wh uh who's sitting there at least by their looks hold on one second Uh, <laughs> I literally just whipped that up. All right. So, um, Mason, um, looking around the room, you can see um, we'll start with the woman that is definitely clad in leather armor, wielding a huge sword. You see a um, bookish looking little um, halfling that is very excitedly scribbling in a book. Um, you also see a heavy armored, um, dwarf with a shield in the shape of the holy symbol of Grotus. Um, for everyone here, you guys all know who Grotus is. Grotus is the second moon of Galarian and is the god of the end times. He seems to be kind of quietly praying to himself. Um, you can see a, another very pa uh, a pale um, elven looking woman who seems to have a, a scythe propped up against her shoulder. Um, there's also a gnome who seems to be looking around at everybody with a bit of a discerning gaze. Um, there's another armored man, a group of mercenaries as well. Um, and probably the thing that, that stands out to you the most is this stunningly beautiful blonde woman that seems to be wearing full plate armor and carrying a tower shield. 
Okay. So Mason kind of starts moving, and as when he passes a uh, a server who you know might have glasses, he just he takes one uh, a drink, and he places himself here with the armored uh, blonde woman at that table. When you sit down, she looks at you, kind of rolls her eyes, and goes, If you're here to profess your love to me, please don't. <laughs> uh, those who do it are luckier than I. I did not come here for that. I just came here for interesting company. That's all. Well, I can't fault you for that. All right. And then... Let us introduce Myth. An averagely short for an elf. Uh, wearing simple clothes, a very basic uh, blouse shirt and pants with a very simple leather belt uh, with a few pouches just hooked on no, no, no. Uh, skin kind of pallid uh, rather um, fair makes their way to the tables and just kind of sits at the one table that seems to have no one at it swishing a cup uh, and looking around with a discerning gaze just Getting a read of the room. They kind of give that that slight squint of the, ah, huh, that's what's going on here. Uh, everyone here. can also give me a perception check if they would like. I would like. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you're you're still very angry about what happened to you yeah. earlier. <laughs> I'm still upset about the way things went. You thought you were issued a challenge, and that's not at all what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> all right. My worldview was um, opened up wider than I ever expected it could be. Uh, m m myth, I didn't need it from you. The perception check is about you. What? Gotcha. Wrong button, sorry. <laughs> or the right button. <laughs> That's clearly the button. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. So Mason and Aelin, you both notice that um, while he's definitely elvish in appearance, he has very um, reptilian looking eyes. Mason puts that away for now. It's like, that's weird. <laughs> but, you know, there's lots of different people here, so it's kind of like, it's not a... It's more of like, I've never seen that before, not a uh, a worried kind of thing, because there's so many different people here. We have, there's, you know, orcs, gnomes, dwarves, elves. I mean, he, I pretty much his whole... Is, he was invited here, so... He's uh, definitely um, someone to eventually get to know. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. So going around the table, would anybody like to uh, speak specifically with any of the people sitting around at the tables? I think that uh, Dura would like to try to somehow wordlessly escalate just drinking at the same table with this woman into a who can drink more situation. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Like turn turn this passive drinking accompaniment into a competition. Yeah. He has okay. to recruit okay. some of his uh, 
them to his health worth, I guess. <laughs> okay, first give me a diplomacy check. All right, all right. Not good at those. All right, I'm okay mm -hmm. at those. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then <laughs> give me a, co uh, what is it, fortitude save. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember, you have hero points if you want to use them. We have, uh, we start with one, right? You start with one, and you can, you can earn up to one through every hour of gameplay. Yep. To a maximum of three. Yeah. Uh, and then do you run that they roll over, or no? Do they reset? Uh, they reset. Different DMs do different things. Yes. Uh, I, they, I'm not going to hear a point to re-roll that. That's fair. I, I don't, I... Dura can lose a bunch of times today. It's all right. We're just starting out. <laughs> so Amiri, uh, when she introduces herself, she just go, hey, I'm Amiri. Thanks for uh, coming and sit by. Seems like everybody else is too intimidated to sit by a woman with a big sword. And she just starts downing alcohol. And when you guys get to about your like ninth or 10th drink, she looks at you, <laughs> she goes, you know, yeah, half bad. And you just kind of I get a little woozy for a moment. The room starts spinning. The room begins spinning and he's uh, I assume at this point I, I would have introduced like, if, if we're in conversation Dura Red Scale and just he, yeah, he's just enjoying it, going along for the ride. He's not, he's not really in, interested in conversation so much as he was trying to recoup some sense of like his his toughness, and he's losing here too. So I think he's like, uh, not intimidated, well, but drunk. but meek. Yeah. <laughs> she does give you a very like firm and strong smack on the arm. Oh, um, that he yeah he'll he'll be rough he'll be rough back yeah. Yeah, you you can tell this is a woman who does not skip arm day. Uh You would fit right in in my home clan. Oh well, that's a uh, quite the uh, quite 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 the uh, compliment. Thank you. I don't know much about your people, but I know for us, um, clan is life. My hold is the descendants of dragon killers. Oh, I killed giants. Of honor. Giant slayers. <laughs> to that, yes. I can drink and a. Uh, toast again she takes a very very large swing from her drink as well all right now does anybody else want to speak to an npc yeah uh mason's gonna give it a go with his new best friend all right give me a diplomacy check to start sure All right. Now, what would you like to say? Uh, he just says, uh, my lady, what did, what brought you here? Promise of land? Promise of more titles? Promise just or honor? Or just wanting to find new lands and explore? Um, looking for a noble cause to serve. Oh. That's um, interesting. Um, what brings you I here? Ask? Oh, well, what brings me here is continuing uh, to seek something better for myself. I hope to prove myself and uh, possibly gain title. I can understand that. Respectable. As long well, as you maintain on the honorable side of things and don't let your pursuit of power get to your head. Oh, that I understand. The pursuit of... It's not... It's not the power I'm interested in. It is the... It's the way of progress and, and testing my limit to see if I can become something different than what I was born to be. 
so that, that I can respect. Thank you very much. But I have, I still have lots of, to I still have lots to learn. So we all for do. those of you who are experienced in all of this, I'm going to be trying to watch closely. I don't know if I would call me experienced, though. I've been around a bit. More experienced than, than I. So, uh, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> we'll see about that. I mean, we've barely met each other. Uh, we'll see how these things go for us. And then he, uh, puts his, like, cup up as, it, uh, he's like, well, my name is Mason. And it's a pleasure to have met you tonight. She kind of like raises a cup. Um, you can uh, just by a glance, you can tell that it is just water. But she um, like lifts her cup and goes, name's Valerie. Nice to meet you as well. Well met. Likewise. OK. All right. Uh, anybody else? Uh, I'll try next. Uh, quick question. Can I roll to see, uh, like, on a d4 how many drinks I have in, put in my face real quick? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Yay! Okay. Let's go. I'm more talky now. Max, roll. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so I uh, kind of slide a little bit because I feel more people-y. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so... Have you ever been to one of these before? I'm a little nervous. Well, uh, I don't know if I've ever been to one of these before, though. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how the future goes. I'm, I'm Lindsay. I'm Elin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Elin. I'm looking to write the greatest story ever written. I'm hoping this is a good place to start. Oh, stories, yes. I can definitely tell there's going to be great stories. Do you want to see oh, a yes. Do you want to see a magic trick? I love magic tricks. Okay. Uh, so the poppet comes out of her uh, cloak and it picks up the candle on the table and holds it up to her. And then she takes the candle from the poppet and the poppet starts to clap. And she uh, does like a little... Um, gesture and kind of makes it a little more fancy than it should be as she tries to drunkenly not let the candle hit her own face as she then proceeds to eat fire <laughs> and then okay. uh, uh, as it rumbles her uh, uh, chest a little bit she then like burps as the smoke comes back up which by the way that is a cantrip of uh, eat fire okay now give me a performance check yeah I apologize again. I have to do everything manually because Roll20 hates me. I, I get it. Yay! <laughs> Above 10. I didn't hit my own face, hopefully. Hey. You're not trained in performance or anything? Uh, I am. Oh. Is your charisma just that low? Yes, it is. <laughs> Did you not notice by how shy she was? Uh-huh. That's, uh, uh, that's fair. Oh, you know what? Uh, she just kind of sits back in her chair and claps. And then the poppet takes a bow for her. <laughs> I love that. I'm definitely going in my book. You see her just start scribbling furiously. Thank you. And, uh, pop it. I hope you bowed. Yes. Okay, good. You did. Good boy. And she pats him on the head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. I definitely think, uh, going forward, um, I don't know if you've got anybody picked out to adventure with, but maybe... You'd like to stick it out together? Ah, I have not really paid attention too much uh, yet, but that definitely sounds like fun.
fun. Uh, though I did see a guy with interesting eyes earlier. And a oh yeah, I know. I'm definitely. I already got that. I already. I already wrote that down. Hmm. Let's see. That guy looks like he's really holding his liquor, and she's pointing at um, Fizz's character, Dura. Uh, but we don't know his name yet. <laughs> uh, pointing at him. And she's kind of eyeing around at other people. Hmm. Yeah, I'll tell you, the only person here that I really have decided I don't like is that guy. And she just points at the gnome who seems to be like snarkily uh, working his way over to speak to these two over here. You seem to be gossiping a little bit. Ah. I see they're planning conspiracies as the alcohol is slowly taking her over. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, that guy stinks. What? Like bad beef? Yeah, like weak old owlbear doo doo. Ew. Ugh. Amiri, why, why did you come here? Why are you at the beck and call of the sword lady? I'm at nobody's beck and call. I'm looking for something big to stab. This sounds like as good of a place as any to start. So your sword is not just for show then? You think yourself a all. mighty warrior? I certainly do. I'd like to test your metal. Oh. You wish to spar then? Mm-hmm. Mm. He nods, like flexes his arm, like or makes a fist. I am the strongest yeah. warrior of my clan. She kind of like seems to look down in thought for a moment before looking back at you and just um, going, well, they'll never admit it, but I'm the strongest of my clan, too. <laughs> You merely need to bend their wills by force. Exactly. Show it to them. <laughs> now, Myth, you've been quiet there in the background. Did you want to talk to anybody? Or are you just going to be the fly on the wall? Right now, Myth is just the fly on the wall. Carefully observing everyone and more so just taking in anything in the immediate earshot. All right. Well, at that point, Lindsay is going to walk over to you, grab your arm and be like, come here, mister, and drag you over here. Oh, uh, this is the way we're going, I guess. You're a wizard. And you've been kidnapped. You look interesting. Thank you so uh, much. There's for the absolutely follow. nothing interesting much about it. Welcome to the Wizards Guild. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that. She keeps scribbling in her book. The I'm not telling anyone. I'm telling you. So the poppet is like gesturing towards you. He's pointing at you. Pointing oh, that at wasn't a follow. That was a subscription. Thank you so much you. for subscribing. <laughs> Eight months. Holy crap. What a time. <laughs> Myth, do you want to look in the bowl of water? I'm sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> you got the draconic eyes. Sure, I'll look in the bowl of water. You do see your reflection. Your eyes are still not as disguised as you would like them to be. <laughs> and Myth takes a hefty swig of their drink. <laughs> yeah, you definitely belong as a character in my book. Oh, you're writing a book. I am. What about? About adventure. I'm looking to write the hero's story from start to finish. And so I'm looking to collect me a bit of adventurers that I might be able to follow around and write their story. That's quite the tale you're writing for yourself then. Oh, well, I'm writing it for all of us, hopefully. And I'm leaving nothing out. Only the truth and all of the truth. Yes, but it's moments like these, and stories like those. Those are where the pen is more mightier than the sword. 
well, hopefully it motivates generations to come. We will see. I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. She's just kind of like very bouncy and writing in her writing in her book. Myth takes another, uh, this time a much gentler swig, uh, and smirks at this uh, bubbly little one. So, uh, looking around, you think you got any other, uh, you know, first grabs? And anybody else we think we might want to grab into this little uh, venturing group over here? Not fart face. <laughs> mm. What do you think as she's like leaning down towards her poppet and the poppet's like very studiously observing as he floats up a little bit? Okay, absolutely. Give me a strength <laughs> check. Right. Or athletics. Athletics. I was very confused for a second. I was like, why is my different puppet doing what now? Not you, not you. I we was answering. We take those. Yeah. Well, and you continue what you were doing. Um, okay. Here, Aelin. All right, let's see. Who does my puppet want to poke at? Mm -hmm. There she is. I, I think we should look at <coughs> maybe those two over there. Hey, you 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 pin her arm right to the ground. Victory is mine again! He like stands oh up on the table like showboating to anybody who cares. <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright, don't let it get to your head now. The pop Let's see how you handle a real fight. Is the it a challenge? Uh, not right now. But maybe. I don't need a giant sword like yours to win any fights. In fact, as a point of like reference, you notice uh, people would notice Dura doesn't carry. He's got like a small like knife on his belt, but like that's clearly not something that you would fight with. He otherwise appears to be weaponless. Okay, and who was your poppet uh, poking? I'm sorry. Uh, the poppet was pointing towards Mason and the lady, but then started clapping when uh, Dura started yelling. <laughs> Ah, okay. So, Dora, give me a perception check. All right. <laughs> I'm I'm too wrapped up in my own nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> you are entirely too wrapped up in your own nonsense. Dora was very perceptive. Said no one ever. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's abysmal. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. So after about like. 15 minutes or so uh, passes. You guys will hear as um, basically a series of, of like like uh, dining bells start ringing and you can kind of hear as everyone across the room starts to get a little hush. Um, and There we go. You watch as a striking half-elf woman enters the hall, followed by an aristocratic, middle-aged human man. The man wears wears 
finely tailored clothing fit for a noble, while the woman appears to be dressed for battle. She wears a fine leather coat over a sparkling male shirt, and at her waist hangs an Eldori dueling sword with a bright silver pommel. The two make their way to the table, where they remain standing. The man speaks first. Greetings, heroes. I am Yosef Selenus, Lord of Restov. And this is, he gestures to the woman beside him, Lady Jamondi Aldori. We both thank you for answering her call for heroes. You may be few, but we need only the best for this great task. Lady Jamondi offers the room a broad smile before she speaks. South of here, beyond Bravois border, lie the stolen lands. This disputed territory has been claimed time and time again by would-be settlers, but because this area has been a haven for bandits and monsters and other unpleasantness, it has never been held for long. Restov intends for this to change. If you have enough courage to drive off the dangerous denizens of the Stolen Lands, you can seize territory for yourselves and name yourselves Baronesses or Barons. Restov intends to recognize the legitimacy of the new rulers of this land, and none other than the neighboring, uh, none of the other neighboring realms care enough to challenge you. We are prepared to provide backing as a trade partner and military ally. If you claim the land, you will have my, indeed all of Restov's support. Lady Jamondi raises her goblet, and but the details of your individual missions and charters into the stolen lands can wait. I raise my glass to you, brave heroes. For now, let us eat and enjoy the evening. Tomorrow promises to be a very busy day. And after Lady Jamandi finishes speaking, her servants begin circling around the room, filling the mugs and pitchers with ale and mead, uh, filling all of the bowls and platters with fruit, um and serving food from heaping platters. The feast itself includes four courses in all, uh, crisp greens, lightly flavored with savory oils, a spicy seasoned waterfowl, and the main course of a tender roast boar, and the finishing selection of fine desserts and cheeses. For the duration of the feasts, the servants bustle about in their never-ending quest to keep the mugs and goblets full and take discarded plates away as soon as you place them down. And now you may continue chatting and enjoying the feast. Oh, yeah. Dave, Mason's definitely like picking from everything. Some of Elaine's food has disappeared into pockets and bags. <laughs> Dura was initially a little like. Uh, his mood like dropped when uh, Lady Jamandi entered the room. Uh, I put it in the chat like he kind of hid in the bottom of his glass a little bit. But uh, when the food starts moving around, he was easily, easily, uh, you know, codified. He's very like, oh, oh, food. All right, I guess got nothing to be sad about now. And he's, you know, anime <laughs> style like whole turkey legs. I'll oh, eat, eat the whole meat off the bone. Like food doesn't know <laughs> meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't taste that meat. <laughs> It has Myth flavor? is also carefully diving into the food. Is Myth a uh, a, a knife and fork kind of person, or a... like does Myth eat pizza uh, with a knife and fork, or with their hands? Very important. Yes. <laughs> at this moment, Myth is diving in just with hands, going at it with. Uh, it seems a hungered ferocity. Mm. It's almost as if he hasn't eaten in ages. <laughs> I'm terrible, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay.
But uh, I, I don't think that I have anything else to specifically say unless uh, otherwise provoked or prompted. Uh, so before the food had showed up, I was pointing Liza towards uh, Mason and the woman, um, but then the food showed up. Uh, Mason, give me a perception check. Okay. Well, let me rephrase. The poppet was pointing towards them. <laughs> yeah, Mason, give me a perception check. <laughs> All right, Mason, you notice as this little doll standing standing amongst the group of people is pointing at you before the food comes out. Uh, and then you know, the look at uh, you know, pull uh, starting his food he finally like uh, notices this thing. And, uh, there is a doll looking over this way. And uh, kind of Valerie just thing. kind of raises her eyebrow. A, 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 a doll? He points for Valerie to, like, follow his finger where he's pointing. And he's, and he's pointing over to the doll that's moving around. It's like a that, puppet. That is a doll. Liza, oh. should I send my little buddy to try and get them to come over here? Liza? You mean Lindsay? Lindsay, sorry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, go for it. Okay. So, little guy starts doing him a uh, a floaty. Do, 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 do. Oh, does it float around? Yes. Oh, that's cute. I, I thought it uh, it would be equally that's cute right. for it to have to walk l like little tiny steps. Nope. I purposely made sure he levitates. I, that's uh, also I very was, cute. I was I like the levitates, but I was kind of hoping he was uh, he was gonna be a moogle. Oh no, he, <laughs> he can move all of his limbs around and stuff. Once he lands on the table, does him a little walkie, does him a little wave, and then kind of gestures like, "Come follow, please." And then bows, and then uh, does him a little floaty. Or no, he doesn't float this time. He's going to do him a hoppy. <laughs> Doop. Well, uh... And then hops on uh, Myth's head, and then <laughs> goes back over here. Miss Valerie, it seems that this uh, doll uh, wants us to follow. I mean... I guess I've seen weirder things. All, all right. Then uh, Mason will put uh, get stand up and uh, walk over, and he will sit here. It's like, uh, well met. Uh, that's a fun trick. Yeah, I can't say I've seen a floating doll before. That's new. That's my poppet. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. a, a, a puppet? Puppet, puppet. Very similar things. Just no strings. Mm-hmm. Notice that. Interesting. So what, uh, brings you all here? She's writing a story. You I'm tell... writing the greatest story ever written, and I am happy. Excited. Valerie just kind of nods slowly. I guess you could say it's a bit of curiosity at the chance of something bigger. Mm hmm. I can, I can understand that, I think. And she kind of raises an eyebrow at Aelin with the floating doll. You can kind of tell she is a bit intoxicated right now as the doll is just giving her a pat. <laughs> like it's going to be okay. <laughs> but uh, Aelin is like, well, I came here because of the invite, but I feel like if I can do some good, I should do some good. I respect that. Huh? 
That's, that's not a not a bad reason to be here. Are are you uh, you all looking to work together in the uh, in this endeavor? Well, we're definitely. Lindsay chimes in. Well, none of us are certainly going to do it by ourselves. That's very fair. I figured it's better to get a get a group together that seems respectable. Um, you guys seem interesting. I know interesting characters make for an interesting story. So, you know, you pardon me if maybe I get a little judgmental, but you seemed interesting. I think you'll fit well. Oh, thank you. Well, my name is uh, Mason. So it's a pleasure to meet you all tonight. And yes, I would uh, would be interested in working together. Because like you said, we cannot uh, do this by ourselves. Exactly. More allies we can have in this situation, the better we are at a start. Sounds like the uh, stolen lands are bits of some nasty business. But nasty business makes for an excellent story. So. I think we'll be more than up to the task. Well, we have to make sure we get through it first. Then you can write it down. Well, we need to get to it in order to get through it. But yes. Uh, what do you know about the Stolen Lands? Other than what we've been told. Any stories that you could share with us? Well, uh, not so much really stories so much as rumors. Uh, I've heard, you know, they have multiple people have tried to settle it in the past, but it seems like one great calamity always seems to take them out. So. I think it's like. Five or six previous kingdoms have attempted to st establish themselves in this land. It doesn't, I don't understand it really. It seems to be very, like, abundant in resources otherwise, from what I've been able to gather, but. Hmm. Mm. I think we've got it though. Yeah, so it's essentially whoever can get this land gains uh, a tremendous amount of resources. Sounds, in um, in you know, I understand sounds interesting. And sounds like a worthy quest. I recall anything about the area. So I talk to a lot. And she's like uh, effectively trying to drunk and recall at the moment. Uh, let's see. Nope, got nothing. Yeah, ma, you, you, you're like, I. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing I could think of that would do that. Nope. All right. Dura, what are you typing up furiously over there? Oh, I'll just say it then. Uh, I, like, I'm just imagining that I like we're in the middle of like just whatever our own conversation while you guys are talking about real stuff. And I, Dura's like, ah, oh, yeah. And then when he hit the ground, I leapt upon him and I put him in a chokehold. And he nearly passed out before he finally yielded to my victory. And that's how I, uh, I would have been chief, but that's another story for another time. Point is, I'm awesome. <laughs> This is fucking inebriated as shit. Give oh, yeah. me another diplomacy check. All right. Oh yeah. Let's keep doing bad at these. All right. <laughs> That's a deception. Ah, they're it, they are the same modifier, but I will click the. <laughs> they are the same modifier. No, yeah. no, no. You're fine. If, yeah, if it's both, the same modifier, both, it's okay. Uh, we'll take... Yeah, because charisma's plus two. I'm not okay, trained yeah, in either. 
I guess you're not trained in really good at both. Yeah. All right. So Amiri seems very absorbed in your story. Uh, that, and she's just like, I'm not trying to achieve anything. I'm just being a guy. <laughs> I'm being yeah. a background. That's why I was just typing it. I wasn't. <laughs> Uh, well, these things have consequences. Sure, yeah, so, yeah. um, but yeah, so, uh, Miri kind of like, at your story, she's like, wow, it reminds me of the time. Eh, uh, you know what? Maybe that's a story for later. I think, uh, that one deserves a little bit more atmosphere, if I'm going to tell you my, uh, Magnum opus so far. But that, hey. As if this place is any appropriate for atmosphere. Exactly. No one wants to tell a story around a table with a bunch of people and make a noise in the background. Need a good campfire. Campfire. In mountains somewhere. And a log that you from a tree you knocked over the same day. Yeah, yeah. See, you get it. Cheers! And <laughs> just another drink. Yeah, just pounds down the drink. Well, I definitely don't want to dr dr adventure around with these assholes. You think you and me got this by ourselves, or should we talk to anybody else here? I think I could do it myself, but <laughs> you have proven to be excellent company. I would love to adventure yeah. alongside you. That sounds like an excellent plan. So, two does not make a tribe. Mm. We should probably... There is wisdom in that. Uh... She just kind of <laughs> gestures to the to the table to the south. How about those numb nutses over there? Uh, <laughs> well, at the moment that she's saying that and doing that, I take, like, a turkey leg or a chicken with, like, a drumstick, and I just yeet it across the other side of the room and, and try to hit this guy. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> Mostly because we haven't talked to this guy yet. But <laughs> you, you see they him seem involved reach down here. They're involved down here. You see him handily reach down, take an axe out of his belt, and one swoop cut the turkey leg in half. Well, that was impressive. Over at you. That was impressive. You should come over here. <laughs> He's yelling. Seems like they have no time for your shenanigans. Well, I, I, I wasn't sure if that, I, I couldn't something. tell if that was the DM like doing a thing or whether it was just <laughs> the GM silence. loading screen. Yeah. Okay, right. So you um he handily smacks your smacks your um your your thing out of the way. He deflects and the arrow. He, yeah. Yeah. He deflects it. When he looks up at you, he's kinda like Really, man? That's no way to treat your peers now, is it? I don't know. Seems like a great way to get your attention. Well, I guess you might be correct there. Though it may not be the attention you want in the long run. I don't know. All attention is pretty good attention. We can agree to disagree on that notion. So you're not going to come over here? No. All right. I look to Amiri and I said, well, that didn't work. He just kind of goes back to chatting. They're not like, for some reason, they're not. There's no tokens there, but they, he is 
sitting there with a mercenary company, basically. Oh, okay, okay. I assumed that these guys... Are they both sitting, like, with other people that are just nondescript NPCs? No, nope. or... the, other, the, other the other guy is by himself. Would I have mm -hmm. caused enough of a scene in this that maybe the other guy, I have his attention? That I could, like, walk oh, yeah, he's with him? He's definitely looking at you. What about you? You want to come over here? Well... I, I suppose, I guess, as long as it keeps you from making a ruckus, what can I do for you? Make or Varn? I am Dura Redscale. And we're trying to um, fill out our adventuring party. Yeah. Well, uh, that's an admirable <laughs> goal. Uh, give me a diplomacy check for one. <laughs> All right, let's let's go again. Let's go again. Twelve. He kind of looks you up and down, and he goes, uh, "No offense, but uh, I heard about your spat with little lady with uh, Lady Jamandi, and um, you've got a little bit of growing to do yet before you're ready to adventure with me." Ah, what do you know? More than you do. Not as much as she does, but more than you do. Uh, he, he, like, the the thought of uh, Jamandi kind of, like, dampens his fire a bit uh, with the event that had happened, but, uh, like, which, which stops him from escalating this into, like, an issue. You uh, would you would notice too. He also does have the Aldori dueling sword on his hip. Yeah, maybe he he eyes that up, and he's uh, he, I'm a little wary of it, and I'm just like, ah, uh, fine then. If you're not interested, be off. All right then. Wouldn't know greatness just, if he bit him in the ass. Don't make a mess over there. All right then. Well, that was my... um, Dura, give me. Yeah, I, I'm imagining that this is where it, where it, where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been there for like five minutes. It's yeah, the whole yeah, time. Dura, I imagine. Me... I saw you move it there. Yeah. Dura, give me a perception check. Let's I saw that too. That's again, what I please. Yes. <laughs> Dura is never perceptive. He's just gonna uh. hang out till you notice him. And Miri's gonna like tap you on the uh, tap you on the arm and just point behind you. Huh? It turns around. And it's gonna move whatever opposite direction you're looking. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Evade my notice. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. He looks he looks to his right and the papa goes left and then the other way around. What? Is there meat on my face? She just starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> he starts to try to lick it off, even though his tongue's not nearly long enough to like reach where he thinks it is. It's like, ah, oh, keep going, keep going. You, it's it's a little further to the left. <laughs> Does he have anything like dangly or like, uh, like a feather or extra tufts of fluff from like a <coughs> cloak or a necklace on him? Yeah, probably. I mean, if you if you look at the icon, you can see that he's got like your general generic tribalistic like bones and claws and furs and and whatnot. Uh, you know, barbarian stuff. Um, Is there anything it could like pop off of you? Um, most of it's probably going to be like fastened with leather ties or something like that. Um, you could theoretically maybe uh like disarm the dagger that's on the belt like pull it out of the clasp or the frog or the sheath or whatever it would be uh probably a sheath nah he doesn't have fingers um <laughs> he'll probably just like pull at something for a second until you start moving and then move away <laughs> sure yeah he just like pulls on it uh is that like the time that you like you want me to notice him now he'll he'll pull and then be like ha ha yeah, he, he looks Thank down at the me. like the, the tug and it's like, huh? Ah! And <laughs> I think it spooks him. <laughs> and he tries to squish it. 
<laughs> but uh, we'll say we'll say I miss or something like it. it uh, I, we do not want me to roll to hit. <laughs> No. <laughs> not, not roll to hit. <laughs> but like I, I try to ah and slam my fist down on like the bench beside where he would be and like just But then he's on the table. Yeah, now he jumps on the table. And he's just waving. Little beast! And like he makes like um like you know uh like like fisticuffs, but it's not fisticuffs, it's like he goes like and does like claws with his hands. <laughs> And then he, like, kind of, with his little uh, puppet meat hand, just kind of boops your fingers one at a time. Dora looks to Amiri. Just, like, like, just looks to see what she, her reaction is also. Oh, Amiri's just having a laugh. <laughs> Dura's, Dura got not really high on his uh, his um, fortitude earlier, so like he's he's pretty drunk, uh, and so he's just like not sure what's happening. Is this real? He, is this is this really happening? Like is this a, like is it, this is either some sort of arcane trickery and is not to be trusted, or or I have passed out and this is a very strange dream. Or like there's like it's just like he's not sure what to how to process. Is this Amiri beyond reaches, his ability to process? Amiri reaches over the reaches over the table and pinches you. Hmm. I would never admit to say that hurt, but that was definitely a pinch. I am not sleeping. <laughs> so no, then you're, you're not sleeping. So then he <laughs> starts to float above the table and then kind of does his little come here, come on. <laughs> and like hello. <laughs> hmm. Ah. I think it wants us to follow it. And then vanishes under her. Oh, I mean. Well, what were we just saying about and two does not make a clan. Indeed it does and not. They can't hear you. <laughs> Stupid thing. Uh, she's had three more drinks, so she needs to do fortitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you've been you've been drinking a while. Nice. <laughs> I can still set up. Yay. Eventually, the drinks just don't even bother you anymore. Oh, today <laughs> your blood alcohol hot content hits 100 percent, and then you just there's nothing more <laughs> no you're definitely catching a buzz but you're able to handle it like you're not you're not choking on your own adam's apple i'll put it that way i don't have apples i'm a girl <laughs> who's adam The big ones here. Yeah, Chimney Bob. This is uh, yeah, this she is in roll twenty. To, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot her name again. Lindsay. 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 Thank you. She says to Lindsay, "The big ones here." Big one. Big one. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, hi. I'm Lindsay. I'm Dura Redscale. He like pounds on his chest. Well, Matt. So, Hi. let me ask you a solid question. Do you think that you will be the source of very many interesting stories? I think I already am. Excellent. Welcome to the group. Well, that was easy enough. Looking to Amiri. <laughs> she starts scribbling down on her. Lindsay just starts furiously writing. Dura, Red Scale, and... Uh, 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 um, um, Amir, Amiri, I guess. Amiri, I guess. Dura would not introduce her. It's not his place to introduce another person. Like that's their shtick. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, like Lindsay points her quill at Amiri, like your name, and Amiri is just like, I, I, I guess I'm Amiri. I guess I'm Amiri. Got it. Okay. <laughs> 
Like, you see she is writing everything down word for word. The poppet's now on Elon's head and is just, like, waving at the two of you. Your <laughs> creature is strange. Thank you. I have known some... Uh, I have known some to keep rats as pets. But this does not seem like a rat. I've called him a rat, but no, he is not a rat. What is it? That's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure. He's a gift. <laughs> the conversation I, I, got I, got a little awkward there. <laughs> I heard, I heard the collective eyebrow raise. Uh, <laughs> He's helpful. Do any of you fancy yourselves particularly mighty warriors? Mighty. Mighty, no. Effective, yes. I'm trying to be. Learning to be. There is much you can be taught. To, to make I stuff. definitely want to learn. Keep yourself in my good graces and I shall teach you everything that I know. Then I shall try. <laughs> He looks for a um, what would be a pitcher and uh, uh, refills your cup and his own. Hmm. <laughs> Effective. <laughs> looking to uh, the the elf looking man at the end of the table who I didn't get the name of, but like. Effective, because you just said effective, and he thinks he's being clever, but he only has ten intelligence. <laughs> Myth raises a glass, or uh, raises his mug to him. <laughs> just yes. Effective. <laughs> Valerie just kind of chimes in. I definitely know my way around warfare. I'll put it that way. Though, um... We all have room to learn. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, it's a flashback memory, uh, suppose that's true. Just remember that, and it'll do you well. It's a valuable lesson in time. Humility makes the beer taste sour. Mm. Oh, when the beer goes sour, it's terrible. It's a tragedy. Like she, you can tell she's had a lot. <laughs> like I don't drink beer, I guess. <laughs> Again, you guys can visibly tell Valerie is just drinking water. Now, after about two hours of chatting and, and dining together, um, you guys do hear as a series of bells begin ringing to mark the feast's conclusion. Um, Lady Germandi rises and gives one final address before retiring to the evening. My friends, I hope you have enjoyed the food and drink this evening. Her words are quickly met with, met with a round of cheers and enthusiastic tapping of several dozen mugs and goblets. It takes a few moments for the room to quiet down again. Smiling broadly, she continues. You honor me, but truly the night is for you. As heroes, you have responded to my call. 
and I can't wait to hear tales of your exploits in the weeks and months to come. Tomorrow, I shall speak with you all about your individual charters, and I suspect it will be a busy day. So I suggest we make an early evening of it. After all, you have kingdoms to plan. Lady Jamondi's words are met with an even louder round of cheers and drinkware tappings. And a few goblets even shatter thanks to over-eager hands. Lady Jamondi gestures to the double doors to the east and west. Of course, I've arranged bedchambers for all of you. My guards will escort you to them now. I hope you find them restful. We shall speak further tomorrow when we meet back here at sunrise. And after you guys are done devouring the remainders of your plates, you all will be brought to the uh, east wing. You just give me one moment to get this all set up. What I did. <laughs> now is that broad east or is that Kingmaker East? Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is gonna be actual east. It's it's Kingmaker East. <laughs> Thank God. We just want to make sure. No, that's fair. And Strahd East was only for Death House, so give me a break. <laughs> I'm only teasing, I'm only teasing. It was a funny <laughs> thing that happened. Go check it out on YouTube. It was, it was really funny. You should definitely check it out on Fizzbeg's YouTube. There's room shenanigans. There's room there shenanigans. Room there shenanigans. was... Shenanigans. In that same episode. There were... Okay, and I'm gonna come here. Oh, it would help. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to turn on Fog of War for this map. That would be dumb. No, no, no. no. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just moving these guys away because they don't actually need to be here right this second. Come back, new best friend. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you can see the little rose compass there. Oh, hold on, I'll back uh, out. I cannot see a little rose compass. All right, I will. I'm guessing you're putting it that. here. Yep. yep. Hey, I see it now. North is Dang up! It. Yay! We did it! <laughs> we did do it. It is up. Alright. Uh, da, da, da. There we go. Alright, and you all have found yourselves? Yep. <coughs> Alright. So you guys are brought to this room. This room is lined with um with four beds. Um each bed has a little uh foot locker at the foot of it in order for you to put your stuff in or wherever you want. And um yeah. you guys can basically wind down and get ready for bed. definitely do that you know now that we're not um i guess my preparations for now that we're not uh doing a fancy thing anymore he will you know take his armor off his his chainmail off put a little oil on it to maintain it the correct way uh sharpens his sword puts it and then puts it on top of the foot locker and uh Starts to get ready to uh, go to sleep. All right. Anybody else got anything special they're doing? Aside from drink a bucket of water, um, just going to 
take a few minutes to try and meditate and try to uh, think again on the area uh, that we'd be going into if there is any stories of curses or anything like that or if she's too cloudy right now she'll probably do it tomorrow or do it again tomorrow okay so uh was that 22 supposed to be that check no that was uh the fortitude oh okay yep 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 so now i'm rolling dang it <laughs> yep you are uh you do not recall anything that seems pertinent to what you were looking for all right uh, probably still, uh, I'll try again later. Or I'll ask the bones later. Should we ask the bones later? Or she's like talking to the puppet and the puppet's like nodding. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, the only boy. thing worthy of note that Dura might do is make his bed less comfortable. Like he throws his pillow to the side or on the floor or something like that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Otherwise, just if we're sleeping, all right, time to sleep. And just lays down and he is not a quiet sleeper. Definitely probably snores. All right. So you guys go to sleep. And for the first half of the night, things seem to go relatively quiet. Then suddenly, at around three o'clock in the morning, you can hear um, what sounds like fighting. We are awoken to what? the sounds of battle. And in fact, you all hear as one guard lets out what only can be described as a a dying cry and you hear what sounds like someone falling to the ground well as soon as hearing any kind of commotion like a battle uh mason would shoot up and throw on his chain mail and grab his sword okay so you guys can Hear the sounds of dragging and some some hushed whispers while you guys are setting up your armor. Um, Dura you have about on one some, minute uh, before combat starts. Dura slips on yeah. some uh, some gloves with spikes on the knuckles. Uh, Mason puts on his chainmail and grabs a sword. Spear and crossbow, let's go. Myth slips into their leather and keeps a hand close to a particularly shaped pouch. Mm, yeah, I don't think anybody here would have seen one before. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. So after you guys take about a minute to get yourselves ready, um, I will need initiatives. Um, okay. May I, like, as they're getting ready, something that I think I'd maybe look through the crack in the door, crack the door open, and just kind of, like, get an idea of what might be going on outside. Like, Okay. So you and immediately uh, as you crack through the door, you can see the black what appears to be a bunch of uh, bandits dragging one of the guards out of view. I see three on the map. Uh, can I can I have that? Is that knowledge that the character has now? Yes. Or? Yes. I, and so I, I pass that information along. Uh, I see. Three. Three. Bandits, I assume, to the east. They have dispatched a guard. Ah. We love a good ruffian. Let's 
Give them a challenge, then. (laughs) Damn. I'm going last. (laughs) Wow, dude. Wow. What's your dex? Uh, Dex four is 14. Okay, yeah, I believe these guys have a higher dex than you. Yep. Okay, right, so the black... the black... We both... Yeah, we did. Oh my god. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good one. Where did it go? Um, am I? What? Hold on. Sure. My my role my my initiative tracker disappeared. Oh. Yeah, oh. it didn't log mine. It just like the entire the entire tracker vanished. That was, that was weird. weird. I don't you think you turn it off and on again. I go, I'm good now. Okay. I don't think mine'll work correctly since my sheet doesn't work. Your sheet now, what'd you work. roll? I rolled a three, but I added it in there. There you go. Mine was a nine. Six. But I have yeah, no idea how to add. Man. I got it, I got it, I got it. Boom. Here we go. All right. Okay, Dura, you are literally in the door. So. Yes. One action move. One action dagger attack, which definitely does not hit. Well, doesn't he have to open the door first? Oh, yeah. Okay. I only had it like so, cracked, like I, I like the idea was stealth. Okay, yeah, no, totally fair. So then at that point he walks over, opens the door. Unless are you actively preventing the door from being opened? Uh I don't think I'm stopping him from opening the door, uh, but I'd be right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. He basically opens the door, goes, ah and and tries to stab you and, and fails miserably. Haha, uh-huh, take that. And then it is your turn, Dura. Perfect. I'm going to... Uh, I will punch out at him. I'm going to strike at him with uh, my spiked gauntlets. But I'm actually going to be casting the Ignition Cantrip uh, with its melee. So I believe... Uh, with its melee it's range fine. instead of uh, at range. So... Uh, it becomes... Uh, the, the attack of the 25 to hit. <laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> nice. Uh, for eight fire damage, it appears. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 Um, he spontaneously catches fire and dies. <laughs> <laughs> he lets out a blood curdling scream and dies. <laughs> Just right in the. He. He's like. I'm ready for him. He comes over, opens the door, isn't ready for somebody to be ready for him. Like, tries to strike out, like, pathetically at me. Ha! 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 Boom! And it's just right dead. Super dead. <clears throat> Dura laughs with, like, a, 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 a zeal of bloodlust on his face. And he says, the fight is on! Then just steps over his corpse and runs out into the hallway to engage the next guy. Okay. <clears throat> that is all three of your actions. Uh-huh. So then it goes to the next cutthroat. Oh, 
Now, um, the one thing you guys all notice that is probably the, the most distinctive feature on all of these guys is they all have a black tear tattoo on their face. <coughs> I don't believe an 11 hits. No. No, an 11 does not hit. Oh, shit. Uh, does a 19. Sure will. All right, well, he'll take four damage. All right. Because he finally stabs you. Now, hold on a second. Yep, nope, you're good. Okay. He stabbed me with a dagger. It's not a fight unless we're both bleeding. <laughs> and then the next one. This is how I die, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you should. <laughs> you take six damage. Sure do. All right. The second attack will terribly miss you. A, a critical miss, in fact. Yeah. Did you see him kind of like throw his dagger into the floor and go to immediately draw another one? I think and like maybe I deflect it and like disarm him or something. Yeah. But he, he basically uses his next action to immediately draw another dagger. Mm -hmm. Mason. Okay. So, action one, move out of the room. Tony, move next to Dura. Can I swing my sword at him from there? Yes, you can. Okay. So I'll use two actions to... Power uh, attack. Power attack. Yep, power attack it is. Alright. <laughs> oh, Bunga, it is. Alright, let's see. Let's see how Kawabunga. That is very Kawabunga. Hold on. I is need to see great? some. I, I, I need to check that. That might be. I think you cut him in half. Oh my, nice. yeah. Oh my god. So how do you just eviscerate this dude? What I want you to fuck? know, you did more than... You did more than four times his total health. So well, how do you destroy? Well, uh, the battle was going on and Dura bravely like uh, set someone on fire in front of him and then ran into battle. And then when he started to hear Dura's um, sounds of getting injured, he runs out in a fury and just kind of channels that like that strength of uh, years and years of like, you know, chopping down trees and whatnot, uh, growing up, and he just kind of chops right through the where the neck meets the shoulder, and just goes right from chest to groin, and then just pulls out the sword from there. Nice. All right. So I'm gonna give you a hero point for that. That was good. Who's um, and um. That was sick. You dude. see, that was 24 damage. Move and attack. So that was also only um two actions. You do have another action. Oh, okay. oh no, two, two, two attack. Sorry, I did, I did, two, two act I, power attack, right? Yeah, I did power attack, so that's all. So I yeah, guess yeah, I did yeah. more damage than that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh my god. Right, because it's the great sword. Oh. Yeah. God. But still, was... chopped in half. Roll to intimidate. Oh. That was that was good, dude. That was that was mad. Oh. Also, um, you need to check your damage formula for your great sword because it rolled a yeah. zero, and that's not I... physically possible. Yeah, I don't know. I did this last week, and for some reason now it's. It's all... No, because I have... Oh, okay, then. I see where I did... I got it wrong. I'll fix it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I under regular it damage. When I pulled out the sheet, I put it in critical damage instead of damage. So, yeah. I'll fix that right now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Myth, you uh, are up. D I'm sorry, I'm sorry. D uh, Greatsword's a D12 or, or 2D6? 
I believe. Let me, I'll, I'll look it up. It's probably one. Game. If it's anything, it's probably one d12. Uh, most starting weapons don't have more than one damage dice to begin with. Uh that that's not always true. I, I, I said most. Um, I'll most, look it up. Yeah. You continue I, the game. I, I'm already. I'm already. I'm already right here. Give me three seconds. Great sword is one d12. Yep, one d12. Thank you. All right, and then myth. Okay, um, GM, just one quick uh, reminder. It, our movement, am I able to move through ally spaces without yes. impediment? Okay. Yes. Yeah, there's no penalty through moving, moving through ally squares. Okay. You just cannot end in an ally square. And I'm just going to have... Myth is going to quickly swing around, slink behind his two new comrades, uh, and slip right around the corner here. Uh, still at the ready, but not... not ready to do anything just yet. Okay, so you're just kind of like hovering over it. Yeah. So are you readying an action to do something? Is that what you're doing? Yes. If okay. If Dura misses a swing, I'm going to quick fire. Got you. That's totally doable. All right, Aelin. It's me. Ah, ah. Can <coughs> I shoot a spell, or am I too far? Because of it depends on the range of your spell. Oh, it's more of the visibility because of the thing in the middle. You can, you can see. Okay. Yeah, cool. I think uh, definitely. Oh. Right. Yeah, you can see. All right, just ah, needle darts. Okay, that'll hit. Woo! I had your needle darts pluck him in the head and he dies. <laughs> All right. And for right now, you guys are out of combat. Death by pointy. Yep. Uh, I guess quickly I look at the attackers. What are they wearing? They all are wearing a set of studded leather armor. Um, if you guys search them, um, you can find amongst all of them a dagger, a hand crossbow with ten bolts, a suit of studded leather armor, and a belt pouch with five silver. Um, so no recognizable colors or or symbols. Oh, that's other easy. than the fact that they all have uh, black tear tattoos on their face. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Did we now, see anybody else with that tattoo earlier tonight? No, you did not. However, you all can give me a society check if you want to know about that. Okay. I think that there's no way that I would, so I'm not. I'll, uh, I'll do my best. Society's not my strong point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Aelin, you have at least heard of these people before, and they are known as the Black Tears. Um, they are a, um, a originally formed through merger of seven street gangs from New Stepfen and Port Ice. Um, the Black Tears are a criminal organization of cutthroats and thieves known to dabble in kidnapping, extortion, and assassination, and the sale of illicit substances. Members are frantically loyal and exceptionally ruthless, and each one carries the group's signature weapon, a dagger with an ebony pommel. 
And they each have three black tear tattoos under their left eye. Ah. These twats. Uh, also, um... Uh, here's a good question. Does anybody here read Draconic? Uh... Yes. Not I. That's a surprise. But, um... When you are so myth, when you re look down on their um, at their faces, you can see like a little script that is written in Draconic on their face, and it does say "live free or slaughter." Oh, that's just lovely. So these twats, do you guys know about the Black Tears? I can't tattoos. say that I know anything. Well, that is also their tattoos because they're really lazy branding. Um, that's the name of their gang. They used to be a bunch of smaller gangs and now they're one big gang. And they are just awful kidnapping, extortion, murder, substance running, uh, organized crime, just... Lovely dinner guests, from the sound of it. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, they are from a couple of the surrounding areas, I believe. Um, and she picks up the one dagger. Yep. Uh, the pommel. Yep. The, all of them carry one of these daggers. And they all have the tattoo. Uh, yeah, they're all just awful. And... I'm pretty sure most of the surrounding areas, they're either uh, arrest or kill on site. Well, they've got themselves quite the motto written on them. Oh, I can't read Draconic. What does it say? Live free or slaughter. Ooh, edgy. Very. Well, if they have come to this place looking for a fight, they have certainly found one at the most inopportune of times. Um, and Dura slams his fists together, uh, and I'm going to cast... And uh, his his tattoos and scars flare to life with a, uh, a fiery glow. Ooh. Very cool. Okay. <clears throat> Now, um, are you guys gonna uh, take a quick moment, just search the rooms and stuff? Yes, see if the other guests are here well, or are missing. Yeah, I was gonna head over to this side and start kind of, like, knocking on door, listening, knocking on doors. So, all the doors, all the doors are open. Um. And so, um. So the ro first room you walk by, there are five corpses, two female humans, a male human, a male dwarf, and a male <coughs> elf. Um, you can tell that the elf is wearing a silver ring. I just, um, that's the room I'm at. Yep, that's the room you're currently standing yeah, in front I, of. I just feel terrible that we didn't make it in time. And I, uh, I will continue moving on. I, uh, and they look pretty messed up, right? That there's probably no chance. That... No, they're definitely dead. They've been stabbed multiple times. Yeah, so then I would are just... all laying in pools of blood. I would just move on to the next room. I'm going to start this one. So, we'll start with you then, Aelin. Um, you, the room that you check, um, there are no bodies in that room, although the two of the beds are soaked with blood, Ooh. and a severed human hand lies in the middle of the floor. Huh. Uh, okay. Huh. Um, give me a bit of a perception check. Dang it. So, believe it or not, you still notice. Hooray. Um, like, uh, 
underneath one of the beds, you can kind of see a glint of silver. And when you look closely, you notice that there's a long sword and a tanglefoot bag that is, seems to be like caught on the uh, on the handle of the long sword. Now, the thing that is probably most concerning to you is that all of the blood on the long sword is on the handle and not the blade. Well, they didn't get a chance to fight back. Oh boy. Okay, not good. There's a hand in there. All right. Now, um, Dora. So the door that you go to check out, there are five corpses in that room, two male humans, two female dwarves, and a male halfling. Um, underneath one of the um, pillows, you can see a minor healing potion sticking out from underneath the pillowcase. Hmm. <laughs> Now, Mason, back to you. Okay. Um, the room that you currently open up is uh, currently empty, but fresh bloodstains hint at recent violence. Um, you can tell that this what this room was being used as some of the, uh was used as resting space for some of the guards, as you can see, like a guard uniform, kind of like. Folded in the corner. Did, did they look like they were able to fight back or were they killed before even being able to grab a weapon? They for the, like they look like they may have attempted to fight back, but for the most part had been caught off guard. Like there's blood on their weapons, but not as much as there is on themselves. You know what I mean? Uh, he will go in there and make sure each guard uh, that tried to fight back has a firm grip on their weapon. Okay, now, um, while you're doing that, you do notice that each of the guards also has a minor healing potion. Did the, uh, uh, did the guy... He will the... pick up the minor healing potions. How many were there? Five. Five. He'll pick up all five. Did the uh, the five corpses in the room that I searched? Did they die like chumps, or did they die in like like they were fighting? Um, the <laughs> the corpses that were in your room look like they did not get a chance to fight back. Like they they were almost all still in their beds when they got slaughtered. Uh, I'll walk in up because I, I caught my eye caught the the healing potion. I'll I'll walk in and I'm gonna go take that. And, uh, but, like, I say to their, their corpses, uh, I say, Your enemies fought you like cowards! And uh, I, chug the, I chug the healing potion. Which I think is, what, 1d8? Yeah, it's a d8. Yeah. Fantastic, we love that. There is a sword and a bag in here. Um, I don't know if we should use it. If anybody needs an extra sword, I have no Sorry. use for a weapon like that. I have a sword, but if it if if the sword is at the is looks like it was used to defend themselves, please leave it with them. Uh, there's no bodies except blood and a hand I'm gonna say we should probably leave that one then Okay. <laughs> there is one more room to check for for survivors uh, yeah so yeah let's go over there <clears throat> I'll All join right. you after, uh... so this room is currently empty though the bed shows signs of having been slept in um, you guys can see some familiar belongings. You see, like, one of Amiri's necklaces, um, one of Harem's holy symbols, like, one of the holy symbols of, of Grotus, um, a, one of Lindsay's quills, and, um, a pair of Valerie's boots are all kind of left in this room. Though, there does not seem to be any evidence of blood or, like, 
uh, <coughs> foul, foul, uh, foul endings here. So maybe this is where I look point, looks at, um, you know, followed Jura in. This is probably where they were all sleeping and they might have reacted faster than we did. I'll grab uh, the the leftover possessions from Amiri. Uh, she would not fall to the warriors as weak as these, if you could even call them warriors. She'll want this back. I'll see to it that she gets it. Yeah, uh, Mace will grab the, uh, Valerie's things and uh, Lindsay's things. And um, what was the, the symbol? A holy symbol of Grotus for Harem. Yeah, so he'll, it's, he'll it's his necklace. Those, he'll grab all those things and put them in a pack to find, um, hopefully find them and return them. Kind of hope that he's care hoping that he'll be able to return it to them if they live through this. So no. uh, he'll put those things away and then come out. And then he'll look at um, Myth and um, Ilan and. Um, this room looks like this is where uh, the women slept, but um, and and and, uh, and the dwarf, the armored dwarf, but uh, doesn't look like the fight was in here. So they might have woken up earlier, or maybe been out and about and got caught in the fight. I think we should definitely uh, try to find them and find out where the fight is right now. Yes, that's probably the best idea, especially if we're to find what happened to our new wayward friends. We should be quick, though, lest there be no fight left for us when we get there. That is fair. Okay. And is, is this doors? That is doors. And if I remember right, you said we were in the eastern wing. So we would have passed through those doors, right? Yes, those those doors um, lead to an aquatic garden that you pass through on your way out here. So you know that if you continue heading in that direction, you will eventually get back to the main hall. Which, which logically is where we would think to, that we would want to go, right? Right, rest of the party? Yes. I was going to say, I, I can't answer that for yeah. you, but yeah. Um, we could try to listen. Maybe we hear... Um, another sign of battle, but it seems like it would be logical to kind of make our way back to the main hall. I think our best bet is probably make our way back that way. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll peek through, like, the keyhole again. Okay, uh, I, I, I would think that's a stealth roll, uh, unless you... Feel otherwise. Oh well, you're gonna you're gonna need some rolls for me, but I need to cool. I need to check something else first. Hold on. Okay, so if you're peeping through the keyhole, uh, through the keyhole, just give me a perception check. Okay. Hey, right. I'm trying to be perceptive, and it worked. So, um, you can't see anything, like, that seems outwardly, um, off about the room, other than what, on the far side of the room, you think you might be able to see some movement. Um, you're not entirely sure what that means, but you can see some movement. The room is definitely not empty. I can't tell whether it's friend or foe. Are we ready? Let's go. Mm -hmm. And I'll fling the door open. Alrighty. So, you fling the door open. And... Oh. So I'm an idiot. Ah. <laughs> you see it has... Four cutthroats pop out from behind the bushes. One of which will throw a um, lesser alchemist's fire. Hmm. 
Oh, lovely. So it was so lucky me. Also, I don't know if you intend for us to see this, but the letter A4 is on the map, which it wasn't before. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw that part. That I mean, that doesn't matter. But yeah. It doesn't, but I, I wanted to. Yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> what strange runes upon this floor. <laughs> They're the ones that tell me what room you're in. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, hold on. I'll check in this here. So... I'm really glad that one's gone, guys. I don't think we could have beaten the A4. I've heard them more dangerous than gazebos. Their angles are too sharp. Mm -hmm. What are they, French gazebos? Okay, blue. <laughs> Can't afford that. Nope, it's too expensive. Maybe after we get our titles. So I'm using this as being the ranged attack, but it's not a, um, I'm not shooting you with a hand crossbow. Right. Okay. Okay. So does a 25 hit you, Dura? Sure does. But okay. because I cast Mage Armor earlier, it's not a critical hit. Yay. Yay. I don't die yet. So, so you will take... Eight points of fire damage. Incorrect! I use my reaction to eat fire. Hell yeah! I just go... Yay! Like, breathe in you... real deep and just, like, like inhale a bunch of it. And yeah, you still take you. three. I still take three. Yep. You do still take three. That's and true. everyone within... Five feet of you... <clears throat> Amazing. Yep. Also takes one point of fire damage. Okay. I was legit waiting to also have to eat fire as like something was gonna explode. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> you basically just see a Molotov cocktail hit hit Dura in the face. Was that a cocktail? Uh, I'll eat that. Uh, <laughs> spicy. Spicy. Meatballs. Spicy. And now you have to run up on him and burp it in his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that doesn't really help us out. It makes it harder for him to see. Within the smoke cloud or concealed, but that would make it harder for us to hit him. Oh, I could... Yeah, I, no, I see. He'd just move out of it, though. Oh my god. So we should roll initiative, huh? Yeah, you probably. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Yep, my initiative. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> It didn't work, but I tried. I clicked on me, and it didn't happen. All right, that's spooky. My initiative is 17 again. <laughs> that is spooky. Oh, God. I've got some highs and some lows today. Mine is higher than a three. Well, you just took some fire to the face. It's true. You know, your eyes are a little bit, like, watery, so that would slow you down <laughs> a little bit. DM, can you please add me? Oh, you're... Yep, 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 yep. Thank you. What's up with your buttons? Me? Yeah. Her sheet's not... She can't get the Every sheet to work. It, won't, uh... sheet, it crashes roll 20. Oh. Yeah, she's having a really bad problem with it. Yeah, we only need a few more months, guys. They're, they're working on it. <laughs> let, let them cook. Yeah, even when I was first setting up my sheet last week, it kept freezing. Um, That's really weird. Check for, I assume, Chrome updates? My Chrome's fully updated. Hmm. Maybe, are you using Chrome or Firefox? Chrome. Maybe try through Firefox like I am? I'll try a little later. Sure. Yeah. All right. First up is Myth. Oh, God. Yep, you get to open up. Then open up I shall. Myth's going to slip through and past and is going to open fire on this, this, this guy. 
The one directly in front of me. I don't know. The, the, the southmost one? Yeah, whichever one is directly parallel to me, because I cannot figure out buttons on here. Oh, yeah, okay, that, that guy, that guy, okay. You just click and hold, and it'll ping. Oh, thank you. Yeah, just click and hold. It should, anyway. It should. Who knows how things will work once they completely redo it, but it's... Uh, believe it or not, you do hit. Oh, excellent. Roll damage. There you go. So your bullet does, you know, graze off his chest. Um, that being said, all of you just hear a very loud bang come from inside the room. And then I will use my third action to attack again. Okay. Um, just remember that your weapon has a reload one. So it takes an action to reload. Then I will use my last action to do that. Yeah. By the ancestors, uh, you're supposed to throw the bombs. <clears throat> Let me check something on your sheet real quick, man. You should have a gunslinger's reload. I want to know what your reload is. If it is going to explode in your hand, you should let it go and throw it. But it explodes in my hand and sends the explosion away. Uh. Okay. <laughs> okay, you get thoughtful reload. Okay, so you can technically. You can do a recall knowledge if you want whenever you do a reload, just so you know. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to give you any good ben like actual mechanical benefits, but you do. Get no, I, I think I get those later on in like a, a level or two. Yeah, it seems very similar to the investigators devise a stratagem, but we'll see. All right. So then it is Cutthroat's turn. Is this cutthroat's turn? So first, he's gonna shoot at Myth because he's the most apparent person. Does the seventeen hit you, Myth? Yes. Then you will take two points of damage as you are shot with a crossbow. Huh. He will miss I... when he fires at you again, and that was his turn because I... fire reload fire. Dare say that hurts. How badly did he miss? That is a good question. How badly did he miss? That is a great question. So for what anyone not knowing, that? if you miss by 10 or more, it is a critical failure. It doesn't need to be a knowledge. Uh, and you hit, and it's a critical success, even if you don't roll a 20, on 10 or more the other way. My AC is 16, so you would have missed by 10. Critical that is a critical fail. So you can kind of hear a little twang as his... um. His crossbow string seems to uh, slip off the the um, bow, and his weapon backfires for a moment. Um, Elliot. Okay. That was that guy's turn. So now it's this guy's turn. Uh, you know what? Uh, he still really only sees Myth, so he's going to shoot at Myth again anyway. Well, remember, the doors are open. The, the doors are open, but Myth jumped in. So, this is a 19 hit. I would say so. Do you take three damage? <laughs> I'm going to reload and I'm going to fire again. Does a 15 hit? No. Then it misses. Okay, now, which one is this? It's this guy. You know what? He's going to say, don't think I didn't see you there. And he's going to shoot at Dura. Does a 22 hit you? It sure does. You take a whole one point of damage. As it grazes your cheek. Like the little line of blood drips down and he like licks it up and he smiles. You just wait till my initiative comes up. He does not say. 
And then he will reload and fire at you again. Does an 18 hit? Oh, on the reload. Yes, it does. Then you will take a uh, whopping six points of damage. All right. Uh, suddenly feeling a whole lot less confident. <laughs> <laughs> I am down Mason, to two you are out up. of 20, friends. Okay. So we've we've gotten to the point where start. that healing potion saved my life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mason's gonna action one. He's gonna run over here, close the gap between these two, and uh, uh, uh which one? Well, I, it doesn't matter. So this guy over here, uh, mm -hmm. he's gonna use two actions of power attack. Okay. Now let me see. I think while we were in here, I think I set it up where now it just I have a button for power attack. So nice. let's see how it works. Hell yeah. Did that you work? what the fuck? Critically hit, you critically hit him. And what the hell is that damage? Well, it, 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 so I did it's holy hell for, like the power attack. So it'd be four D twelve, right? Power attack adds oh. an extra D uh, an extra oh, dice well, to your Maybe head. I did it wrong. Hold on, hold on. I'm so, yeah. so I might have done it wrong. Sorry guys. You're all right, uh, you're all right. Yeah, you no, still... hold on, hold on, hold on. So it would be two it would be two D twelve times two? Yeah. Okay, that's what I did wrong then. Uh if uh can I re roll the at as for for the damage? Yeah, yeah. Re roll it for the critical damage. Sorry. Is this the, okay? uh, uh it's a great sword. That's still a respectable amount of damage, and he's definitely dead. He's still cut in half. Yeah, you just like completely bisect the dude, but uh But like I literally just come up and just like chop it off his head with with the sword. Amazing. Yeah, it's just it's his head rolls into the water, you hear a little bit of a splash. And just kinda of have my guard limp. and I just get myself back in guard position versus the other one, and then uh that's my turn. All right, and then it's this guy's turn. Now, he's kind of mad that he got shot at, so he's going to fire his crossbow at Myth. Does a 16 hit? Just barely it <clears throat> is. You take a whopping one point of damage. Oh. He's going to reload, and he's going to fire again. Uh, I believe a 13 misses. Ruffians. Yes, it does. So... <laughs> You just hear a solid thud as the crossbow bolt sinks into the wall behind you. He shakes his fist at you angrily. Aelin, uh, it is your turn. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot at that one. All right, I'm going to shoot needle darts in his face. Yeah, you definitely hit him in the face with needle darts. Which one, by the way? Just to clarify, I remember being not working. That guy, okay. Yeah, he is dead. He is completely dead. Look at that. You just, like the needler, just, and he goes down. Just like that bit in Bride of Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> He gets turned into a porcupine. Yep, and then I'm just gonna step back a little. <laughs> Hold on. Did you move to move forward? Yes. You don't break up your movement. Oh, uh, okay. It is an action to move up to your full movement. Um, yeah, it's not It's not like you can take half an action, move to 15 feet, half an action, move 15 feet. It doesn't work that way. My bad, mixing up 5e. Yep, totally understandable. That's why I'm here to remind you. All right, Myth, you're up. Wait, what about my turn? Oh, did I miss you? Yeah. Yeah. Did I, did I double click? Oh, you I double clicked. You might have double clicked. 
I also I did I, I, critically I, fail my like I got a one. I don't know if that means I lose my initiative for the first. No, time you do not lose an initiative. Okay. Lose so the initiative. I will say I will say an interesting thing that um just I've been doing wrong for a really long time that I need to get better on. Um, when you go down, your initiative gets changed to right yeah, before that's the, the thing person I've that downed you. Yeah, I consistently forgot about that. It's that yeah, way you don't I, get double tapped. Yeah, it's 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 so that way the person who downed you, like if it was a reaction or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you can't be it's not abroad. Like, yeah, in, immediately. Um, so, yeah. So, Dura, you are up. So, Dura... Uh, recognizing his uh like he he is critically wounded at this point and being the the warrior that he is uh employs a little bit of tact in this situation and uh, instead of running in head first uh, into battle uh he's going to um he, he drops his fist does the dragon claw thing and he swipes twice one in each direction of uh, once per enemy one there and one there uh, and he's going to slashing gust as air waves literally tear out and fucking anime sword style. Uh, critically missing the first guy, and I don't know. I doubt that a thirteen hits the second guy. It does not. So you, you they both duck as <laughs> yeah. you just decapitate the tree line. Yeah, slices through all the foliage and shit, and it's just like, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, and then just, he like. Exhales and all of the, uh, uh, he's going to exhale and, uh, belch the smoke at his feet so that way he is now concealed. Okay. All right. Myth. Okay. I'm going to. What do we got left? Take aim at that individual. The southmost one? Yeah. Did the ping not yeah. work? No, no, I, I, I just, I, I, I was okay. looking at the, at the turn order when you <laughs> clicked it, so. Okay. My eye was not on that part of the screen. Understandable. All right. Taking a shot. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Nice. Oh. Yep. Roll critical damage. Yay. Uh. Uh, is there a button for that? And if you roll damage, it should just roll critical. Yeah, if you hit the just the damage. Yeah. Excellent. It, it will roll both by default, and then in your options on your character sheet, you can actually make it so that way it gives you a button instead of defaultfully rolling critical. Aha. Uh -huh. Which is something is I prefer. But like, it's like... Yeah, that's the way I have it set up where it just all comes out. So you to you completely blow the back of that guy's head clean off. Um, <laughs> bullet enters through forehead, exits through back of cranium. There is no longer a cranium. All right. Then I'm going to use my next action to reload and my final action to shoot at the guy by Mason. Okay. All right. Let's go. That misses. All right. It's not a critical miss, but it does miss. All right. And then it is the cutthroat's turn. It's a free action to cry. <laughs> it's going to swap to his dagger. He takes the dagger out, goes to stab Mason with it, and um, th th throws his dagger right into the river. <laughs> as, you know, as you do. They've not done well. He's doing his best. <laughs> he is then going to take an action to draw a new dagger. He's going to stab again. A 15 does not hit you. No. Yeah, so you... you um, deftly step out of the way as his blade passes across you, like, just glinting your chain. Your chainmail, like barely touching you. Not enough to, to do anything. All right. And then it is your turn. Okay. Uh, and then I'll return with attack of my own. 
Uh, I'm going. Okay, here's. Let me have a question for you because I know we figured it out last time we played Pathfinder, but it's also been a while. So I gotta remind myself of some of this stuff. So I have. Of course, it logs me out. All right. So I have. Exacting strike. Yes. Does that does that combine with power attack? No. Okay. So it's either if I'm doing regular attacks, I would use exacting strike, so I wouldn't get it, or use power attack. And right. Still... Exacting exacting strike is to replace your standard attack. Gotcha. Gotcha. Where I wouldn't get the penalty. Okay. Exactly. So uh, two actions, gonna power attack. Okay. You definitely hit. He is definitely dead. Three for three. Mason is just decapitating people over here. And just like I come like walking back to you guys like huffing and puffing because like <laughs> it, that's some physical labor. Dura is like touching at his really bad, like uh, at his arrow wound, and he's just like, "You're sure you're here to learn?" <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I still have lots to learn to reach the goals that I am uh, pointed to. I've seen you take no less than three lives in as many moments. Well, I, I fought hard to get here. I, I, I've, I've had a little bit of practice. You are certainly are you a strong okay? warrior. Are you okay? Like, I, I didn't, I take out the little satchel. I found these in the room with the guards, and then I hand everyone uh, a potion. Here I nods, <laughs> takes it. Appreciated. Ooh, uh, uh, thank you. <clears throat> and I'll, ah, I'll just. Excellent. Do. Thank you. Hey, check the seven. Myth is going to pocket theirs. They're not too worse for wear yet. Right. We have. It's not quite peak condition, but I'll keep fighting. <clears throat> When we're done with this, I'll have more honor scars. Uh, that is a fair way of looking at it. Whoops. Blasted buttons. Okay. So what you guys up to now? We have to continue uh, moving. We don't know if there's more of them and what other damage. So continue moving then. Mason, I'll let you lead the way. <laughs> I, yeah, Mason will then take point. And we will move <laughs> to the, I guess, this is where we all came from here. Yeah, I think yep. so. Oh. Uh, well, he will open the door. Okay, so when you open the door, you do see a... Hallway that is littered with the bloodied corpses of six guards and three people wearing black cloaks. Um, if you guys give me a perception check. Okay. Nope. 
Nope. Sorry, the buttons are jumping wow. around on my screen. Nope, she rolled an eight. She failed. Not a critical fail, but a fail. Yes, I did do pretty bad. Oh, uh, was that your perception check? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought that was your heal check. Okay. No. Uh, no, I we kind of passed that. Yeah, you guys, could, if you wanted to take a 10 minute to do a treat wounds, you could. I would love you have that, but medicine. I didn't want to interrupt the flow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we could have done that, like, like. I also didn't want to, like, like, assume that Island would just do that, you know? I, I was having jokes at her being very distracted by watching Mason cut dudes in half. Yeah. No. Chat, for everybody who's oh. wondering, I was in the out-of-game chat asking if anybody was trained in medicine with healer's tools. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> since I whiffed at whatever we were looking for, she's like, oh, you're perf profusely yeah. bleeding. Hold on. Yeah, I'm real bad. <laughs> Let's see. Of course, Dura downplays his own wounds. And, no, I it, it's it's only a flesh wound. <laughs> only a flesh wound. You still fail. <laughs> that still is fails. not a... Yeah. Gotta you gotta beat a 15. Um... <laughs> Jeez. Now, um, do, now, when I... Uh, do I have a starting hero point or no? Yeah, you do. Can I use it to reroll? Yes, you can. Okay. Don't crit fail. <laughs> Damn it! Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, oh wow! I hate that the for both of us. The dice have spoken. I hate that for both of us. Yep. That is <laughs> unfortunately brilliant. I can't give her mine to use, can I? You could if you wanted to. Okay. I, I would. I, I would. I would be willing to spend my hero point to allow her to roll. Again. Yeah, I. I do allow you to pass hero points around. I. Okay. I will always allow that. Okey doke. Now behave, dice. Yay! We'll take there that. There you go. It's uh, a D8 plus. Uh, sorry, no, two D8. Yeah, it's two D8. Yep, it's two D8. Mundane healing is so good. Just Mundane healing. healing is really good, except now you're immune to it for an hour. Yeah, plus, but like plus nothing. Huh? Oh huh? yeah, plus nothing. No, it's just two D8. Uh, just the, yeah, the just pluses two D8. come later. I'll take six, thank you. Whoa. And sorry for the uh, interrupting the flow. You're good. Oh, yeah, you're good. So, for everyone that uh, rolled above a five for their perception check, which is everyone, All right. you guys can hear some moaning and some groaning, no like some moaning noises and other things coming from a room off to the side here. Um. Then, as the anybody who rolled above a 15 can actively hear, um, where are you, halfling? I can't see no more, but I still smash you good when I get you. Oh, that sounds lovely. We should, um, we should go say hi to whoever's in there. Right. Yeah, so Mason will slowly back to getting over there to that side door. You said the moaning was from the side door? Mm-hmm. It's all from in that room. And, and so the 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 moaning and what I just said are basically the same noises. Ah. Uh -uh. So you guys open the open the door. Wow! Ooh, and oh, as yes. soon as you guys open the door, you can <laughs> We're in see danger. a modest-sized <laughs> library that lies in ruins. Bookshelves along the east and west walls have been empty, and books lie heaped into a pile in the northeast corner. Set upon this heap are the severed arms, legs, and heads of a dozen guards and would-be heroes. A blood-splattered padded chair sits next to a shuttered window. Um, and 
walking around seems to be a um, ogre. Now, you guys can see that the ogre seems to have a well-placed slash across his eyes, which uh, mm. seems to be limiting his ability to see. And then, basically, as soon as you guys open the door and step in, you can hear Lindsay, you can see Lindsay pick her head up from behind a pile of boxes, or er, a pile of books, and she's like, help, help, back here! And then I will need another initiative order. All right. Excellent. Hey, I've reached above 10. No! We got to <laughs> share. It, we gotta, it goes around. All two of you. Oh, I have to pull up Lindsay's character sheet. Give me a second. What a good introductory sequence this is. Oh yeah. It it's one of my favorites. This is this is the most oh. complicated campaign I've ever really tried to run, but it's also one of my favorites. You have like actiony music. Uh, hold on. I, I know you're busy. No, no, no. You're you you good. You good. We've been I in actually celebration do. For a while. You, you're good. I actually completely forgot about the audio for a second. Big monster. Yeah. Um, big fight. This big would like to request uh master of puppets. Yeah. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or uh. The immigrant song pretty good too yeah there's a really good one uh the immigrant song in old norse yeah, yeah. have you seen that no I'll, I'll share it with you later yeah well put it in the put it in the discord i'll check it out okay i will or cat you know what cat can do it hold on Cat, find it and share it not the horses <laughs> You do, you do hear some noises. Very good. Thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. I am immersed. <laughs> yes. So, um... Oh, it's a bard core version. That's good. Luna has come to watch us get beat up. Luna's going to have to be disappointed. We're going to be the ones beating up. She's always disappointed. Ellen, your initiative? Oh, yes. Sorry, one sec. I am one-handed. I'm holding the baby. What else am I missing? Myth. The baby, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Looks okay. like the o the ogre is up first. Oh yeah. Doom. I 
first things first. So, for the first two actions, he spends he spends his time furiously scratching at his back. You just hear him going, itchy, itchy, stupid mice. And then, uh, Get it. Right, and then he is gonna try to having heard Lindsay. Uh, take a swing at her with his ogre hook. And he misses terribly. Hooray. <laughs> we love that. He just knocks over a bunch of bookshelves. And you can kind of see as, like, his hook seemingly gets stuck on one of the bookshelves for a second. Uh, Dura, it is your turn. All right. Um, I believe that I... I can't, I cannot move through his square unimpeded, so I'd have to tumble through. But I do not have enough right. movement speed to be able to do that in one action, because tumbling through counts as uh, rough terrain. I Does? Uh, um, mm -hmm. You start up to your speed during this movement, you can try to move through the space of an enemy, attempt an acrobatic check against your enemy's reflex DC. As soon as you try to enter its space, you can tumble through using climb, fly, swim, or yada yada yada. Uh, success difficult speed, terrain, yep. yep. Difficult terrain. So I don't have enough of my own movement speed for to do that in my first action. And you I think tumble through is yeah, tumble through is only one action. So I will ride here. Then I'm going to tumble, uh, attempt to tumble through his space to end up opposite here, uh, in front of Lindsay. Um, so I need to attempt an acrobatics check against his reflex DC. So here is an acrobatics check. Yay! Okay. Does that succeed? Which would be 10 plus his reflex. Yes. Alright, then I get to be here now. I like tuck and roll. I like do a forward roll between his legs or her, the troll's legs and uh, I, I like jump back up onto my feet turning around to face it and then like do like a guarding stance. I know it's not an actual mechanical stance, but I guard in stance and I cast shield. To okay. increase my AC further to attempt to defend our halfling friend. And uh Stand behind me! This won't take long. So, um, Amiri is going to, um, uh, lay a hand on Dura's shoulder and just be like, man, you guys look terrible. I thought I had it rough. These are, uh, these are the marks of a warrior. Look on in glory. 
And she is going to cast Soothe. So you will heal 10 hit points. Um, and you do gain a plus two status effect against mental effects. Uh, a, a plus two status bonus to saves against mental effects for the next minute. Cool. I needed that. That doesn't overheal for temporary points, right? No, it doesn't. I didn't think. I, I, I'm not super familiar with Soothe compared to Heal. It's a flat 10? That's cool. Yeah, well, it's 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 a, it's a D10 plus 4, so I rolled a oh, 6. Okay, okay. Oh, I see. So you get 10. Most appreciated. <clears throat> now, I can only do that a couple of times, so try not to get hurt too much worse. I can't imagine this will that we'll be needing it. Uh, and she'll also use her last action to grant you guidance. So you will get a plus one status bonus on your next attack roll, perception, on one any one attack roll, perception check, saving throw, or skill check. Love that. Getting a hero moment. Nice. Well, you literally got between her and the thing that wants to flatten her, so... Oh, yeah, no, that was the goal. <laughs> Aelin, it is your turn. Woo! Okay. Uh, hmm, let's see. Just trying to see if this magic missile works like the other magic missile. Get ready, guys. Get ready, Dura, guys. like Crowley, will put himself between anything and everything, but Dura doesn't have the AC to back that up. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got the mouth. <laughs> sure does. Oh, boy. All right. Uh, since I am unsure at the moment, I'm just going to needle darts again, because it's funny. In the booty. Booty hole. Scratch that itch. And you miss. Oh no. Dang it. Oh wait, hold on. Ranged attacks don't get flanking. No, 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 no. I'm not worried about that part. Are you seeing if I hit you guys? Oh. For anybody who was interested, flanking gets a plus two in this system. Yes. Technically, they become That's flat footed, it. which means that they get a minus two. Which doesn't mean that you get a plus two, but it is effectively the same. It is effectively the same. It's also better for anybody who's got rogue stuff, because rogues will always do their sneak attack damage against anyone who's flat-footed. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think we have one of those here. So yeah, you moved, you attacked, you missed. Uh, that's your turn. Yep. Myth. Finally! <laughs> Feels like it's been forever. <clears throat> um, from the angle I'm at, do I have a clear shot? Yes. He's Excellent. very big. Then I am not going to go anywhere, and I'm going to use my first action to shoot once. You do hit. Excellent. I'm not sure if it matters, but that was a punch Whoops. attack. Yep, that was the wrong button. Oh, that was the wrong button, my friend. Um, That's fine. We will change that around. You still hit. All right. There still the go. same. Still the same. He takes four damage. <laughs> the dice have chosen. Uh, then I will use my um, second action to reload and third action to fire again. Okay. Let me hit the right button this time. There you go. You do hit. And a 21 on the second attack? That's tasty. That is tasty. That was two away from a crit. See, but, it knew uh, I needed the 21 from the mistake button press. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do another two damage. Wait, a 23 would have crit? 
N no, he would have rolled a natural 20 if it was too higher. Oh, I see what you meant. I see what you meant. Because I was like, I, I was only questioning you that a yeah. 15 didn't hit, but a 13 would have? I sorry. No, no, no. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, ah, Mason. All right. Mason is moving inside. Get in here and, and one shot this thing. Now we'll flank with Duro. Yes. Yes, that is flanking. So that's one action to move in. Or, yeah, because we don't have the. There's no more five foot step, right? No. Nope. Uh, Yes, okay. there is an equivalent action that takes one action, one of your picks. It is and an it is action, called... yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but step um, step in this is different because step is moving five feet without triggering any reactions. Okay. Well, uh, so I use an action to move in, and then I'm going to power attack with two, with my uh, uh, second third action. Okay. And so I guess plus two to this attack. Okay, it does hit. It does not crit. Mm -hmm. right. So that's 15 points of damage. Hell yeah. It's definitely a devastating blow as you take a pretty noticeable chunk out of his leg. Oh yeah, he just, he comes in like, so he's, I imagine Ogre's facing Dura, getting shot. Uh, by myth, and then he just comes in there and just try and takes like a big, uh, he takes not a big swing because we're in a room, but kind of like takes half hands the sword and just stabs it right into his uh, thigh, just cutting Very away nice. the uh, muscle. A shank, if you will. Uh, yes. Okay. Then it is his turn. So let's see how this goes. Aha! So he only spends one action scratching his butt. <laughs> Itchy! And then he will take a swing at Mason, because that hurt. Okay. This is a 20 hit. Yes. Then you will take eight points of damage. Okay. Uh, armor spring again. Does a 21 hit? Uh, yes. Then you will take another 12 points of damage. Uh, he's down. Oh no. No! Dura, it is your turn. Oh no, I lost my flanking buddy. <laughs> he's also, he, Mason is down. Oh, well, uh, I guess that your, your, your initiative literally doesn't change because you were already the initiative before him. I'm guidanced, right? The yes, you are. Okay. Um, all right, then. You chose poorly, troll. I can't remember if it's a troll or an ogre, but I don't think Dura ogre. cares. Uh, Dura doesn't <laughs> care. I, he calls it a troll on purpose. Uh, it's a goblin. And <clears throat> we will ignition <laughs> melee. Oh, no. It just looks at you very offended. Yeah, that's sad. Man, I was even just ah. Um, okay, then I am going to follow that up with uh just a regular uh I'll just punch at it. Oh my god. Nope. <laughs> Alright, then you you punch his The bloody kneecap. table's in the way. So you you go to punch him, you punch his leg, and you take a point of damage. All right. <laughs> you just have a sharp pain in your wrist as your your wrist kind of like buckles in your gauntlets real quick. You He's are very uh, solid. You're making me look bad in front of my new friend. <laughs> and then you look over to your new friend, just on the ground, smashed. Yeah, <laughs> and I see he's down on the ground. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> my new friend <clears throat> he hit things good he does hit things good oh well then this is um it's going great. This is a, 
This is the turn. <laughs> Man, that was the turn, huh? <laughs> it's like he did he did twenty one points of damage. I had nineteen points of health. <laughs> Dang. Oh. Oh. Well, we we do know that you have a number of healing potions on you, so I have, it's just yeah, an you interact action for someone to okay. And I haven't used mine. Oh, hey, look at that. So, Lindsay kind of like peeks out from behind the pile of books, looks down, kind of shakes her head sadly, and goes, Come on, guys! You gotta write a better story than this, and she's going to hit um, Mason with a soothe for eight points of healing. You will also get a plus two status bonus against mental effects. Okay. Uh, I think. Hold on, she does still have an action. Man, and I'm immune to guidance like now. Shit. Uh, she's gonna tap Dura on the shoulder and cast shield. You can do that to other people? Yes, we can. Oh my god, that's so good. I mean, it doesn't say self. It, does, it doesn't have a thing. I'm sure it's supposed to be self, but I'll, I'll let it be others. That's fine. Yeah, no, I'll take that. It should be. <laughs> That's a really cool flavor. So there you go. I think if it was a reaction, it would be just yourself. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that it takes an action to cast it, and it doesn't have a range of at all. It doesn't have a range at all. So I'll take that. I'm probably wrong, but I'm going to do what I want because I'm the GM. Sure. So, <laughs> so sometimes I will definitely vote rule of cool over raw. Yeah, that's very um, cool. And then Aelin. Can the ogre give me a will save? A will save? Yes, he can. Yep. <laughs> Not at all. Evil eye. What does that do? Uh, fix your eye on the target imposing malevolent hex. The target becomes frightened based upon the results of the will save. Oh, I just realized you also critical failed. Uh, so you take two frightened. Oh, no. Cool. He's, he's, he's itching and freaking out. And now at this point, you can see him start actively thrashing around. He's seemingly looking for an exit. And that was only one action. Can I cast another spell or does it have to be a physical action now? No, there, it, there's no limitations in that regard. As long as your spell does not require three actions to cast, you're fine. Just double checking. So then I will cast two magic missiles, and because of my evil eye shenanigans, I'm just going to pretend it's all illusionary, and my magic missiles look scarier to him, because it's funny. Okay. Just to wrap the thought up, of course we do whatever the DM wants, but... Uh, looking at the shield spell, it base it counts as performing the raise a shield action, which is something that you can only do to yourself. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It does make Unless sense. Unless you have like feats and do the feat chain to like 
beat a sentinel for others, but like then that's yeah, not shield what the spell other does, and that and kind of thing. It, it's very different now because now we're talking about actually physically doing it versus yeah. the cantrip. Yeah. Okay. Hold. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see what I can do there. So there is two. also a level two shield other spell. Ah. Yeah, but she she doesn't have that yet. Nope. Um. Well, she's pretty much next to you, so. Yeah. Oh, nice. you know what? She'll just use protect companion instead. All right. So, I just imagine my uh, magic missiles just come out as little demonic versions of my puppet. Oh wait, no, they can't. That oh my god. Work. Are they demonic, or is it, like, unsettling the fact that they are just equally as cheery and adorable? But they slam into and then explode. <laughs> like, I imagine they're more, like, creepy-looking because they're glowing and just... <laughs> I just think they're all moogles. Yes, they're moogles. Uh, see, I, I'm imagining a sack boy. No. That's... Too. That's what I visualize because of the like what puppets actually are. But right. in my heart of hearts, it's the little devil puppet from Adam's Family Values. I need to Google it. I put a gift last <laughs> week. <laughs> I'll I'll share it again. It's like so wait, what was thing. is that is that damage right there? The seven? Yeah, uh, it's a magic it's magic missiles, so it's two missiles. Uh, 1d4 each is up. Uh, you, you, you shoot him in each eye as, he's, as, his, as his eyes have already been cut open. The magic missiles just kind of bore into his skull and he falls over backwards. There's two little energy versions of my poppets climbing into his eyes like... <laughs> oh god. He dies from a heart attack. No. No. Yeah, just from, no. From being frightened. Oh no. <laughs> he died. Dead to death. Yeah. And so I'll just say Lindsay used shield on herself, so I'm gonna just put it that way. Is the the protect companion did not work? It's for only for uh, summons or familiars or stuff. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> ah, I gotta get more familiar with Bard. All right. All right. Dura doesn't know the difference. <laughs> it's okay. He thinks he still has guidance. Yeah. I'm basically using he... four to get back up now. Yeah, I go and help Mason up. Ah. Thank you. <laughs> that was that was brutal. Yes, that was not not nice. Not nice creature. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, that, uh, are you asking Lindsay or Mason? Both. Both. L Lindsay's gonna be. Lindsay's gonna say, "Yeah, I'm okay." Uh, Basically thank you guys for eyes. saving me. Of course. It was a glorious battle. Oh, he says, oh. attempting to convince everyone else that it was in fact a glorious battle. <laughs> Lindsay walks over to this little um, side of the wall over here. And she could be like, "Thank you guys so much for saving me. I, uh, I, I really can't can't thank you enough." Now, um, I I, I do know that uh, through this door here, there is a bit of a storage room. I don't know if there's anything in there that you guys might need. I've seen some of the guards coming in and out of here earlier when they were loading up. Uh, we should definitely look if there's more fights like that. Um, that are coming at us. We need to prepare, and we may need to. <laughs> I, I I hate to think of it, but we might need to take a few minutes just to catch our breaths and patch ourselves up. Mm. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Bless you. The zoom tight. Thank you. Hmm. Was so there not? Is story? We had oh, something sorry. for you as well. And I take out the bag, the thing that was left in the room. Oh, uh, the Tanglefoot bag? No. Uh, well, no, that no, was Lindsay's, Lindsay's item. Oh, her, her quill, right. I yeah, yeah. Her yeah, quill. her quill. She will pull thank you profusely and be like, oh man, I thought I lost it. That's mm -hmm. a special one. Gift from my mom. 
She kind of like tucks it. it back on her bag. I'm happy to have saved it for you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> can't replace that. I can't believe I left it. Well, you know, danger. Um, so we were going to take, uh, I, I, I'm immune to the, the, the patching up, but I think if you wanted to spend, uh, 10 minutes, uh, mundanely medicine Mason, it probably wouldn't be wasted. Okie doodle. Does this count as a rest? No. Okay. No short rests here. Just a 10 minute downtime action. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you used sure. your focus point, you could refocus while you're being tended. Okay. What's that mean? Uh yeah. If you don't if you don't know what focus points are, it doesn't apply to you. Yeah. Okay. Um <laughs> to answer the question though, there are certain classes that have either magical spells or I'm pretty sure all classes have something to do with focus points, but you, yeah, you have to spec into that. Do. Uh usually you have to spec into it and um you get like special, incredibly flavorful, neat things that you can do limited. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you wouldn't be hey. able to refocus and heal, though. Yep. Well, I got you. You think I'd be able to heal? Oh no! Oh! Oh! Nice critical success. It's because that I is... want. It's because I want to touch Mason. <laughs> you get forty. You get forty-eight. <laughs> Yay! You're really impassioned by the, uh, you, you gotta get the armor off to, to... <laughs> gotta get in there. <laughs> nice. 14 back. That's awesome. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, that gets me definitely back to max. Myth, why don't you help me go through these, uh, through this chest? Now, hold on. Oh. The... Burp, 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 burp. The, the door, door is locked. Oh. That so, can't stop me. I can't read. <laughs> the door is locked, so you will need to attempt a thievery check to be able to pick it. Oh, perfect. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, or let me let me raise you one more thing, and I take my crowbar, and I uh, don't pick it. Reflex, please. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. How about I don't pick it? <laughs> you do not pick it, and instead pry it open with a crowbar. As Lindsay is like filtering through her backpack, she's trying to find her thieves tools. Tool. Yeah, she pulls out thieves tools to see you break the door <laughs> open with a crowbar, and she just goes, "Ah, well, it's just I guess like a metal way to do it." And puts ah. the tools back. I'm sorry, did you have something for that? <laughs> I mean, I could have picked the lock, but I mean, more than one way to skin a cat, I suppose. Door's open, he says in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, when you guys check this room, uh, inside the trunk are eight small cloth bags, each holding a hundred gold. Whoa. There are two lesser healing potions, a plus one mace, a plus one longsword, and there is a small leather-bound journal at the bottom of the trunk that contains all the names of all of Lady Jamandi's servants and guards, along with the dates in which they receive their monthly pay. I can't read any of that, so... <laughs> Find anything good? Bags of money and potions. They're red, so they must be the healy kind. Cool. Any gossip? I passed the book to uh to Lindsay though. See what this says. Yeah, <laughs> Lindsay will point out and be like, "Oh, uh, looks like the coin is probably Jamandi's guard pay." Mm. Um. So, I mean, you know, the the need of the present, I suppose, though it is 
safe to note that that is money intended towards feeding people's families. Do with that information with what you wish. I think taking the potions right now would be a benefit, but everything else, this was intended for someone else. Um, even if the guards who we found dead, this was their intended pay, but this might then go to their families. Coin hmm. will I not help us save lives now, but these potions it, may. Exactly. So let's take the potions, and then we have to continue. Uh, That's just what I think. Duro will agree with that. <laughs> Out of game, does anybody have any uh, naysaying opinions? No. Not currently. Uh, Who? uh, Anyone's a monster? Speak now. Have you said that they are lesser (laughs) healing potions? They are lessers. Uh, Dura's gonna take one, and then who do does he toss the other one to? I have two right now, so I don't. Well, these are lessers, not minors. Oh, uh, that's is that the one grade bigger? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's up to you guys. I mean, I can give uh, myth. Well, I mean, we can also just hold it for right now. If you want to hold the other lesser, or if you want to um, give the other le- give the lesser to, um, I don't know. You guys pick one, or I-, I can hold it and just hold some of these potions. Here, you take this one. I'll take this one. I throw sure. it to Mason. You and I right. seem to be the most likely to be smashed in the face anyway. Uh, that, That's that a is, fair assumption. That's very fair. <laughs> yeah, I have yet to be injured. That Knocked seems the, rather reasonable. Knocked on the table. An assessment. Uh, Lindsay's just, uh, Lindsay just chimes in. Yeah, getting punched in the face is not exactly on my to-do list. And lesser potions for the buy... Uh, 2d8 plus 5. 5. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. Alright. My... Yeah, I'm just adding it to my inventory. Yep, you guys can add that stuff to your inventory. Now... I do think that as of right now, it is getting a little late. This is probably a good place to call it. Um, yeah. Anybody disagree? No, I think that's no, fair. No, that's it's a good pausing point. Yeah, if you're if yeah. you're ready to wrap up, then yeah, no, no better time than right. better better now than in the middle of a combat. No, this is exactly. a good uh, place to stop after yeah. a, a good a big fight, bigger fight. Yeah, and you guys have some some interactions to come up, so um, <laughs> we'll wrap it up there then. Um, thank you all for coming. I definitely hope everybody had as much fun as I did. Um, thanks everybody. Yep. Thank you everybody who's watched the stream. Um, I am going to end the stream now so we can continue to chalk after afterwards, um, and chat. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate your patronage and I look forward to seeing you all either this Thursday for my, uh, Episode five of Curse of Strahd. That's correct. Or um, check out on next coming. Sorry. Yeah, next coming Monday we'll be here for episode two. Um, also, check out Displacer Cat Seed tomorrow. They'll be streaming. Yeah. Um, Baldur's Gate. Yep. I fixed my game, so I'm up to where before my game corrupted. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. What so, time? Yeah. Um. So, uh, about six six thirty. Okay. And the, the so just to can just to clarify too, because uh, Spino did bring up that there is a stream that is coming up on Saturday. It is not coming up this Saturday. It is coming up next Saturday. So that would be wait, is it this Saturday? Oh, it is this Saturday. It's the sixteenth. <laughs> you are correct. It is this Saturday. What so then th- this Saturday, also keep in mind out that we will be running Pathfinder 2nd Edition's Extinction Curse. Ooh. Ooh. So uh, if anybody channel? likes on my channel, and Ooh. if anybody likes 
to watch uh, circus adventures, uh, curses involving the extinction of all life. You may like this game. Dinosaur invasions, cities of the undead. Who knows what you may encounter with extinction curse. That's super exciting. I'll be there. It oh, is very exciting. Well, exciting. I am so excited for that. Is that another what 7 o'clock? What time are you playing that? It is going to be another 7 o'clock, so it'll be around okay. 7 seven to 7.30 to 10 to 10.30. Great. All right. I'm going to say goodbye to my chat, and then I'll jump back into the Discord to say goodbye to you guys. But uh, thank you guys so much for playing alongside me today. I ha always have a good time. Thank oh, yeah. you, Elder Druid, for running. This is exactly what I was hoping for from the first uh, session of this campaign. Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad I could. I'm glad I could provide. All right. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Talk to you guys in a bit. And also, thank you to the stream. Take care, people. All right, guys. That was absolutely amazing. I am having such a good time uh, running with uh, Elder Druid Thirty Three. Uh, between Curse of Strahd and Kingmaker, I love my character. I'm I'm getting into it more and more as we as we carry on. Uh, yeah, things are always a little awkward at first to get to to know your own character right away. But uh, just this this loose, like a heavily anime inspired guy. He just wants to fight strong people. He's got like his own culture where he's come from. Like shamed into like doing this thing by lady javandi he assumed that uh when, we didn't really get into it but uh the he, he's here not because he was answering some call to adventure put out he heard that this lady the sword lord is a very strong person and so he went there and challenged her to a fight and got his ass handed to him and then instead of like you know not like it wasn't like I'm here to kill you. It's like, no, I'm here to fight you. I want to prove myself strong. And then so then when she beats him, it's like, oh, well, you know what? Like, don't fear. I have, I know of what, I know a way to make you stronger. And then maybe one day, like you can fight me again. Uh, and it's do this thing for me. So now he's like going out and going to clear the battle. Not because he cares about owning land or anything like that, but because this is, this is like what his, his, uh, his goals are. And I'm very excited to keep playing that, uh, I really like it. I'm liking um, the ups and downs of the character sheet because, like, I'm definitely playing something that is not uh, meta by any means, <clears throat> which is usually, like, the stuff that I end up building is not necessarily, like, min-maxi, but, like, effective. And I... <laughs> not effective. This is not effective. I'm rolling D4s. <laughs> you guys, it's just D4s. It's not... It's not anything uh, particularly savvy, but, like, being able to flex my knowledge of the system to do, like, tumble-throughs and, like, force opens and be like, oh, I know how this works. And just having it already makes me feel really good so it doesn't drag on. Um, getting to, like, uh, get other characters to, like, have their spotlight, too, and, like, ha have the other players, um, like, show off their unique skills. The the focus ability of uh, Aelin was really cool to see, uh, especially since it like had that massive big payoff. It must she must be on cloud nine right now, feeling so good. Uh, and then um, I haven't used mine yet. Uh, I was saving it, but uh, I realized I probably could have popped it in the uh, in the fight there. I mean, I think I would have rolled poorly, and it would have been really embarrassing. So I think I'm glad that I didn't in the long run. But like, that is what it is. Um, but thank you, everybody, who subscribed today. Let's see. Let me just go back through it real quick. Yeah, here we go. Let's see here. We had uh, DiGiorno Giovanna uh, resubscribe for eight months. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Tomoko Yamori, thank you for your follow. Momoku, you followed uh, before the stream. Thank you so much for that. Uh, and two days ago... Damiano Danger Doodle uh, followed as well. Thank you so much. Growing the channel is really important to me. Continuing to get people interested, viewing, checking out what we're doing. Very fun, very good. Um, we are live currently. The set schedule is Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays being Kingmaker and Thursdays being Curse of Strahd. Uh, basically, if I am feeling good and well, I will be streaming any, every, any and every other day. I'll try to tweet out about it at Wizard Fizzbang on uh, X or Twitter or whatever. Um, 
and yeah, just continuing to to just have fun playing all sorts of games. I I have a goal of at some point I'd like to get going and uh, ooh, we're gonna move that over there. I I'd like to run uh, Pathfinder's Abomination Vaults, uh, but I don't want the channel to be too much about tabletop RPGs. Uh, I like doing a variety of things, but we'll see how it goes. Where where life leads, you know, nothing is certain. Nothing's written in stone. But again, thank you so much for. Uh, for hanging out tonight. If you missed part of the session or you want to continue to watch these or you miss any particular session at all, all of the VODs are going to be, uh, all the VODs will be uploaded to uh, youtube.com slash wizardfizzbang uh, where you can catch them all ad free uh, unless you uh, have ads because you don't pay for YouTube premium or whatever like that, which is perfectly fine. But that way you can catch it all there um, so you don't ever have to miss a thing. Uh, but for that, I'll say good night. Thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have a magical time. Bye-bye.